Hello folks. So, prompted by some information I came across last night, which has sort of reminded me of what I was writing about many years ago, uh, probably about 2008. Um, and it was when a certain man had become the mayor of London and everybody held great hope in the guy because obviously he acted as a buffoon so naturally people thought he was actually a decent guy forgetting that the guy was part of the building club with Cameron and Osborne and other unclean animals this guy is seriously high level bloodline so let's just have a look at what we know about Alexander Boris de Feffel Johnson Boris Johnson is a direct descendant of King George II. Now, this is Hanoverians. The Hanoverians are the German Jews who took over this nation in the early 1700s. So, straight away there, we can see that he's from the unclean bloodlines. His father, Stanley Johnson, who we've presented on a previous video, uh, is a former Conservative MEP, so a member of the European Parliament, yet his son is claiming to be the one who ought to bring us out of Europe. Mm -hmm. So his father, Stanley Patrick Johnson, was born on the 18th of August 1940 in Cornwall and is a British politician and author and a noted expert <laughs> on environmental and population issues. So there you go, you've got Agenda 21 there, you've got eugenics in this man. Population issues means population control. Okay, he was a Conservative MEP from 1979 to 1984, so he was in there early. So this guy's a serious player. This is his father, Stanley Patrick Johnson. Stanley being an interesting code as well for the House Stanley, which was responsible for putting on the Tudors on the throne and undermining completely this nation and removing it from the Plantagenet kingly line and putting us into the hands of the Jewish priesthood from Germany. Okay, so this is what you're seeing when you look into Stanley Patrick Johnson. He was also, oh, he was a Conservative MEP from 1970 to 1984 and is a former employee of the World Bank and the European Commission. Now, this is his father who loves his son. So, obviously, for him to hold the love of his son as he does, his son's obviously operating exactly as Daddy would expect. And Daddy is all about environment. He's about population control. He works for the World Bank and the European Commission. Is Brexit safe in the hands of the de I would say absolutely not. Save for the fact that they're now going to use it to cut off the importation of the food supply. In order that the kafir slave-run economy that they're installing in this nation right now and flooding it with all sorts of low-grade creatures from across the Islamic world. All going on now from the lockdowns. I have I keep my eye on the flight paths through the lockdown, the stream of flights from Saudi into Germany and then back into across Europe did not cease, has not ceased and continues to expand. And you're focused onto the little boats coming over through the English Channel. I'm afraid not. They've been coming in via the aeroplanes constantly. So this is all under the son of Stanley Patrick Johnson, Alexander Boris de Feffel Johnson. On his father's side, Johnson is a great-grandson of Ali Kemal Bey, a liberal Turkish journalist and the interior minister in the government of Damat Farid Pasha, the Grand Vizier of the Ottoman Empire, who was murdered during the Turkish War of Independence. Okay. So he's a Turk, Islamic. All right, that's, this is Alexander Boris de Feffel Johnson. During World War I, which we discussed in the last video, which appears to be another cinematic run scam 
as majority of people being killed in World War One would be being killed by the incoming American soldiers who were spreading typhoid and other nasty diseases due to the forced vaccination of all servicemen in the United States from 1911. During World War One, Boris's grandfather and great aunt were recognised as British subjects and took their grandmother's maiden name of Johnson. In reference to his cosmopolitan ancestry, Johnson has described himself as a one-man melting pot. This is your Prime Minister of the British Isles. With a combination of Muslims, Jews and Christians, well I'm not seeing the Christian, to be frank, I'm seeing the Kafir and I'm seeing the Jewish, but I'm not seeing the Christian part of the lying bastard that is Boris de Feffel Johnson. Uh, so it's, uh, with a combination of Muslims, Jews and Christians comprising his great grand parentage. So we've got to go way back to find his Christian heritage. Probably was, would, it would have been crypto Christians, wouldn't they, obviously? That's, that's coming in with the Hanoverians, that's exactly who they are. You know, they're the people that are running the show. The Coburgs, a very powerful bloodline. Very powerful and tied to the Anhalt, which also took over Russia. These are Prussian bloodlines. Took over Russia through Catherine the Great, completely annihilated and took over Khazaria. Yeah, so we get an idea again where the Khazaria Mafia is taking its lead. Prussian bloodlines in Russia. Yeah, 1762. That's how long this has been going on. So it's quite well hidden. But of course, looking at Johnson's biography, it's there all over the page for you to see if you can see. His father's maternal grandmother, Marie Louise de Feffel, was a descendant of Prince Paul of Württemberg through his relationship with a German actress. Through Prince, Prince Paul, Johnson is a descendant of King George II of Great Britain. Great Britain being an occupational title, a franchise. Okay, so the Hanoverians came in and took over the occupational franchise of the British Isles under the occupational title of Great Britain. And through George's great-great-grandfather, King James I of England, he is a descendant of all the previous British royal houses. Ah, that's a lie. This is the Tudor lines. This is the nonsense lines. The Templar lines. Okay, The Plantagenets are the true English monarchs. And they were annihilated by the House Stanley, who were financed and operated for the House Palavasini of the Holy See. House Palavasini being tied to the House Farnese, which is an extremely ancient, old money, powerful bloodline. Okay, everything comes out of the Holy See. Not the Vatican, the Vatican is an instrument of the Holy See, the holder of all our titles, and the administrator of the canon law. So, when we say the Vatican was taken over, and we can see that in the installation of Vatican II, what is failed to be recognised is everything that the Vatican has ever had to deal or suffer has come directly from the Holy See, the families that make up the Holy See. This is where the nonsense has its centre. Okay, the Vatican, remember, in 1929 was removed of all its lands, titles and properties outside the Vatican State. That's what Mussolini achieved in that method. But, of course, everything was moved into the Holy See's grass, which is why they are now moving this system out of Christendom. First, through the uh, slaves the Kafir, that are running the Kafir system to give the Muslims the idea that God's giving them the world, when, in fact, 
what's happening is the priesthood has created the kafir system to drag the Muslims beneath them and then to operate as the sword or the broom of Israel across Christendom. Of course, being in contradiction to their own books, which is known by the priesthood, they are also setting themselves up for the same demise once they've achieved their role for the priesthood. So there we go. Lies, lies, lies. He's saying previous British royal houses is nonsense. We're talking from the Tudors time before that. It was the Plantagenets. The Plantagenets are our line, not the Stanleys, the Tudors, the Hanoverians. Okay, that, it's not. That's not what this nation should be. It's a nonsense. Now, Boris's grandfather and great aunt were recognised as British subjects. By whom? And took their grandmother's maiden name of Johnson. So they came in, foreigners, be given the title of British subjects and took their grandmother's maiden name of Johnson. So there's just deception after deception after deception. You don't have to deceive anybody if you're straight. You only have to put deceptions in like that when you're crooked, full of shit and basically a lying bastard. As Johnson clearly is. You can see it all over him. And what I'm finding more interesting now, he, he looks very comfortable lying his tits off to the nation, to anybody that occurs to interview him. That shows Boris Johnson to be a psychopath. You know, he's showing now psychopathic traits where originally uh, he was struggling to issue these nonsensical orders to the public to stay in the kennel, whereas now... The reborn Boris is loving it. Loving every minute. I don't know if as you can see, he's a melting pot, so he's a multicultural boy. He's controlling our exit from Europe. Well, his daddy's a Europhile. His daddy is big on environment. And his daddy's big on population control also, which in the last video we can see is actually the vaccination programmes that set this game off because you'll have a vaccination and there'll be another vaccination for the side effects of the first vaccination and on and on and on it goes okay remember key workers are going to be the first to get it back in 2009 when they had all this going then the, the reason it died in a day was because they got to the point where they were explaining that the first responders the key workers would be the ones that would have to take the vaccine first and of course, doctors and nurses basically said, I don't think so. Naturally, they know all about these vaccines and what they are. Upon which the public hearing that just basically said, well, that's the nail in the coffin. And they ended the 2008-9 pandemic in a day. Because there was a move to oppose it in the population, big enough to frighten them to death. This is what we need to achieve again today. Now, there's no pushback at the moment against them. This is why they're flying it on. You've all succumbed. You were in the mask. You're following the Sharia line. Yeah, you're all now, you've got your gobs covered, which is a, a stepping stone into your acceptance of your women being covered. Well, yeah, so a lot of women today do actually need to be muzzled because... They've had 120 years of, of entrance into power and through them has been launched contraception, <coughs> free love, abortion, everything and anything to remove the procreation of the race. And this from the so-called nurturing aspect of life, the females. Uh, they've gone on then to open up the channels for homosexuality to be fully practiced, but more importantly taught to children. So that's sex, sex, sexual abuse on children. This is women that have launched all this. And they adore the transsexual nonsense that's spreading across your five-year-old's classroom. This is females. This is what females have been used to achieve in the 120 years since the suffragettes gave them 
the idea that somehow they are experts in how to run the world. Well, I'm pretty sure we can see now after 120 years that isn't the case. And the way that the world was set up many, many thousands of years ago was probably the correct format um, because it did keep all that nonsense. You know, we weren't murdering our children because it didn't suit our lifestyle. We weren't injecting uh, foreskins of uh, circumcised Jewish and Muslim children into the lips and their eyebrows and their nose. And they weren't putting plastic rubbish all over the fingernails with such a toxic glue that all females today are testing positive for copious amounts of nail varnish removal substances. That's what's been achieved in the last 120 years and I have to say in my opinion that it would be a devolution of our nation. So they've took the name of Johnson and he's described himself as our Boris as a one-man melting pot. I'd say he's probably a golem and whatever he's put into his melting pot or his head by his handlers is what he's actually telling you there. He will take on anything he's told and then he's happy to present it to you on television without a flinch. Because he's a psychopath. They love psychopaths. So there we go. We have a major personage as a melting pot of Zion. Because he wants to he wants to merge all religions into a one world religion. That's what he wants to do. And he's very busy doing it. Of course, people don't realise that the way that they're trying to keep the monarchy, this current monarchy, alive. Now, I've spoke against this royal house for many years, not because I've just don't like it, but because I've shown it to myself to be correct that these are uh, usurpers. And they have had no care for the realm uh, since they came in. Their entire agenda has been to undermine the realm. They've undermined everything under Elizabeth II that you might say Elizabeth I achieved for this uh, nation. Whether that's good or bad, it's the fact it is, the symbolism is there. Build it up to Elizabeth I, pull it down in Elizabeth II. Now Elizabeth II, when you get into that, claims to have blood ties to Mohammed. So they're bringing in this kafir system in order to, they say, support this current royal house holding power over these lands. That's what they're doing. This is why it's being installed. It's got nothing to do with anything other than keeping this debauched satanic house in power over this nation. Which, no, I don't want to destroy the system. I'm very happy with the constitutional monarchy system. But we need to have the correct mindset holding the office of monarch to ensure everything operates beneath that office in the correct manner under the realm. That's not the case, and it's not the case because, as I've just said, Elizabeth II, under her uh, fronting, uh, the nation that has been completely demolished. Started by Edward VII, I might add, really pulled it down with the introduction of the First World War, changing the mandate of Freemasonry from upholding the Church of England to upholding the Church of Israel to get the Americans into the war without realising that the Americans were going to be bringing in all these diseases because they'd all just been vaccinated. Okay. I mean, you've got to keep this in mind as well with this foreigner kind of idea that spreads um, these diseases. You know, the first people to get this vaccination will be the soldiers. If they put the soldiers on the streets, they will be spreading it. If they give it all to the key workers and it does damage you, they can basically wipe out the entire system of governance, of military and of security just by vaccinating them. And then the SIS or the SIA, which is running all these licensed security people. And I've noticed uh, a lot more Muslims in these security forces, and they've all been taught to, to suggest that they might keep your head in if you don't do what they say. 
So that's what they're being taught, these people. So if they, they want to obviously shift this private system in, full of foreigners, full of minds that don't understand anything beyond what they're told to do, but obviously the next step would be to dismantle what is. So that's all the police, all the military, all your key workers, all your nurses, all your doctors that exist today, that still have a semblance of Britain, of the British Isles, they could remove them, disable them in an instant with a vaccination. Who's going to come in and take it over? The SIA will take over the security. The United Nations or European forces will come in and take over for the military. The country will be dead. The country will be no more. And you guys will be sat there with no head. No head, no banner, no flag to rally. So, let's now just have a little look at Boris's sister Rachel to see if this elitist power continues in the daughter. Now, the daughter's called Rachel. Rachel, very, very Jewish. So Rachel Johnson is the daughter of former Conservative MEP Stanley Johnson and artist Charlotte Johnson Wall, knee Fawcett, and the younger sister of the Mayor of London, Boris Johnson. So I wrote this back in the day. She was educated at Winsford's first school, Primrose Hill Primary, the European School in Brussels, Ashdown House School, Bryanston School and St Paul's Girls School. It's a wonder this girl could actually settle down and learn anything with the amount of movements that's gone on there. But that's the intention. They're not meant to learn and to be programmed. In 1984, oh, symbolism, she went up to New College Oxford to read classics. Which classics, I do declare. She also edited ISIS, the Oxford University Student Magazine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the cultist girl, girls into the occult. In 1989, she joined the staff of the Financial Times, becoming the first female graduate trainee at the paper. She moved to the BBC in 1994 and then turned freelance in 1996. She has written weekly columns for the Sunday Telegraph, the Daily Telegraph, the Evening Standard and other regular columns for Easy Living magazine and the Financial Times. She is a contributing editor of The Spectator, and contributes a weekly column to the Sunday Times. Okay, so there you can see the family. Continuing daddy's agenda and issues he gets excited about, which are Europe, the environment, and population issues. It would seem to me that we have a full-blown fascist Nazi bloodline running our nation melting pot man who wants a one world religion which means he doesn't want Christianity and they have to keep up the idea they want Islam they don't they're just giving them the idea so they can use them as the broom this is what the priesthood is expert at it doesn't actually do any efforts physical it just tells everybody what to do and it does that by entering the dream time and twisting it so that you will operate according to their will while believing it is the will of your chosen master. So there we have Alexander Boris de Feffel Johnson. That is his real name. If you are describing the man now, we have another interesting uh, thing to look at because now let's get into his position as a politician. This is Boris Johnson. Okay. Now I'm just going to turn the camera back so you can actually see this yourself. Okay. So if I can do that. No, I'm going to have to stop the camera. Boris Johnson, MP, Oxbridge and South Ruslip. So this is Boris Johnson, the man standing as your Prime Minister. He's a company. Boris Johnson, MP, is a company. It's not a man. It's a person. And the company information address registered is King Charles Street in London. 
That would be symbolic of King Charles II. Okay, the front king through which the entire system was changed in order the Hanoverians could come over very comfortably. And as we've just noted, Boris Johnson is related to George II, a Hanoverian. So people, this is what you have going on right now in your nation. Boris Johnson is not anything like what you think. He's continuing the works of Cameron and Osborne, two more Bullingdon boys from Cambridge laying it out. You've got huge amounts of Cambridge educated African sent Church of England vicars coming back into the country now and taking the seats in this church kicking out the old school Protestant can you see this? Yeah. Boris Johnson MP is a company. You are being run by a company. So there you go. That is whom Boris Johnson is. And it also gives insight into his true agenda. He's an open mind and it's filled every day by the priesthood. Not to serve you. Not to serve nation, but to serve the banks, to serve the priesthood, to serve the population cult, to serve the environmental introduction of Agenda 2130, to kill as many people as they are able to achieve. And that, my good friends, is the agenda we are now living in, that they wish to activate towards the end of this month. We really do need to start to realise that the only way this is going to stand down is everybody stops wearing the mask, stops social distancing and open your businesses as you used to do. Because the government doesn't control your life unless you allow it. And as you can see now, our government isn't being run by men or women. It's being run by companies. Companies, people. With that, I will wish you a good weekend. But yeah, I might do some more over the weekend, so you've not escaped that easily from life in the mix. Till the next time.